On the second day of October, Halloween gave to me two spooky sisters and a psycho who killed Janet Lee. Hey everybody, welcome back to the second day of October, and thus the second day of 31 days of October here at Legion Podcasts. I am your host for this uh, special event, uh, Legion Podcast. No, 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 my my name is actually Bo Ransdell. Uh, for those of you just joining in, uh, this is the second year that we have done this, the second annual, I guess that would make it, uh, 31 days of Halloween, in which uh, myself... Uh, goes through 31 movies, a different movie every day, and a different movie every year. There is never going to be a repeat uh, so long as I am doing this. Um, so, that leads us to our second film. And thus begins a mini, I would argue, uh, a, a mini run of movies, a, a small collection of themed films. Uh, there are a couple like this throughout uh, this season. Um, but, uh, for the next few days, we're going to be talking about werewolf movies and we're starting with a movie entitled Ginger Snaps. Uh, Ginger Snaps is a r relatively new werewolf movie. And by relatively new, I mean that it came out in the past 50 years, uh, as opposed to say your wolfmans in, uh, and your howlings. Uh, well, let, let's be honest. Uh, this came out in the year 2000. And thus is about 21 years old, which I think is uh, is kind of fitting because this is a movie that's sort of about adulthood, you know? Um, it, it is a movie about uh, uh, adolescence, about aging, about siblings, um, and it's also a werewolf movie. It, it is uh, as Canadian as you would want it to be. Uh, it is set in Ontario somewhere. Um, you will also be tipped off by the location by the fact that the word program is uh, spelled with uh, a double M E at the end, which uh, blows my mind. It was uh, it was written by a woman named Karen Walton, um, who has been working for a while. She wrote, uh, of course, Ginger Snap. She wrote the the sequel, Ginger Snaps Two. Um, she also wrote a, a fair amount or a few episodes of Orphan Black, uh, and has served as a, a producer and, and, uh, a writer on a number of projects. So, uh, you know, uh, an accomplished filmmaker in her own right. Um, I believe she is also credited with the story, uh, on this film, uh, directed by a guy named John Fawcett and, uh, John Fawcett, uh, directed, uh, not only uh, the Ginger Snaps has directed uh, a, a lot more television like Man in the High Castle also uh, did a whole lot of Orphan Black um, which apparently I would argue is Canadian just based on that uh, although I don't I thought it was British anyway doesn't matter uh, also did some Lost Girl and uh, you know the Ginger Snaps uh, film as well um and, uh, you know, has, has certainly made a career for himself in, in film and television as a, a, a director and a producer. Um, but I would say that of everything they've done, short of Wharf and Black, which is, you know, a fairly prestigious television program, uh, this is maybe the, the biggest thing that either of them have done. And maybe I say that just with my bias as someone who's got... Uh, my feet firmly planted in the horror world. Um, so Ginger Snaps is probably uh, maybe best known, uh, not only for being a movie in which uh, there is a, a heavy adolescent metaphor happening, but also it is sort of the first time that Catherine Isabel uh, hit the radar. Um, she is, of course... Uh, a, an actress who has worked on, oh my goodness, uh, like Hannibal and Freddy vs. Jason she was in. Um, she was in, oh geez, what else? Some Supernatural. 
Uh, she did a little bit. I mean, just a, vam- a movie called Vampire, uh, uh, Being Human. Um, you know, recently has, has starred in uh, the, uh, the show The Order. Um, is in a, a movie called The Green Sea and Bad Times at the El Royale. Like, she's just a, a ubiquitous actress at this point. But Ginger Snaps was the first time I ever recall seeing her. And in in fairness, I you know, I think before that she had mostly done some television and television movies and so forth. Um, but she is really... Uh, fantastic in the film, and if you if you haven't seen it, first of all, there's going to be some slight spoilers as we're talking about these movies, uh, but not too too severe uh, because I, I kind of want you to watch these. Um, most of them, you know, some of these are first time watches, and I, I can't guarantee that all of those are going to be uh, movies that I would recommend. But Ginger Snaps definitely is. Um, it is the story of two sisters, Ginger and Bridget, who are. Uh, kind of morbid girls. Um, they're prepubescent as the film begins, and they are very, very close. They have a, a very firm bond with one another, and to the point that you know there, there's definitely le- like that line drawn between them and their parents, and it's sort of us against the world uh, sort of thing. I believe they are twins. Uh, I don't know if that's explicitly stated in the film, but they appear to be about the same age and they're in the same school and have some of the same classes. So one would assume, right? Uh, Mimi Rogers, of course, uh, famously married to Steven Spielberg for a little while and has also uh, been in a number of films. Um, Plays their mother, Pam. Um, And as the film begins, they're doing a montage of photographs of them dead and they've kind of got this death pact and uh you know the the rest of the school kind of sees them as freaks to some degree but um but they they have one another and that seems to be enough until one fateful night in which ginger uh is attacked by some creature that is run down by uh, uh a van after attacking ginger um, the the owner of that van turns out to be a guy named Sam, as uh, pra- played by Chris Lemke, I think is how you pronounce his name, L E M C H E, and he has been in like the Frankenstein Theory and a bunch of horror movies, uh, believe it or not, and uh, he, he's a guy that I recognized right off the bat uh, watching the film again, even though I wasn't exactly sure what I'd seen him in. Then when I looked at his filmography. I was like, oh, right, I've seen a bunch of the movies uh, that he has done. Uh, a bunch of, you know, uh, one without this being a, a derogatory statement. Uh, you know, some B-horror movies like he was in Final Destination 3. Uh, he was in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and stuff like that. But anyway, this character of Sam is uh, kind of the local drug peddler. Uh, slings a little weed and that kind of thing. And so is very popular around the high school. But anyway, he runs over this animal, uh, starts to believe that what he ran over might not have just been some dog. And uh, after the attack, Ginger, her wounds start to heal miraculously. But in the days that follow, uh, Ginger starts to exhibit some strange behavior. Uh, Her... I I can't... It seems like uh, this is happening, happening naturally, but... She gets some streaks in her hair. Also, uh, the night she's attacked, uh, you know, here's where the whole metaphor comes in. Uh, she starts her period and so uh, becomes a woman. And so she begins to exhibit this more outward sexuality and she's more aggressive. And the interesting thing about the movie is not only does it sort of look at female sexuality and you know there's the monster metaphor that's been used and like I was a teenage werewolf this is really the feminine version of that to some degree but it doesn't forget that society looks at women a certain way and there's a a really wonderful conversation uh, that, that they have in the film between Bridget and Ginger following the death of a classmate and Ginger makes the argument 
Like, hey, look, society just looks at women. You're either you're a whore, you're a slut, or you're the virgin. And nobody expects that you're going to be the one who is perpetrating violence. You're not going to be the aggressor. So for once, we're going to use society's expectations to our advantage. And, you know, clearly, as I mentioned, was written by a woman. I feel like this is a movie that if it were made today would also be directed by a woman, you know, and there are plenty of fantastic, uh, female horror directors out there. Karen Kasma, uh, you know, um, Caroline Axel, uh, just a, a number of great women directors out there. Uh, Chloe Zhao. I mean, who knows? Uh, maybe not Chloe Zhao. She, she's doing prestige work these days, but at any rate, um, you know, it, it, it feels strange that it's directed by a man because it, it because it is such a, a female centric film and has a lot to say about femininity, about the way that men behave towards women, about the way men and, and society in general perceive women, um, that you're, you're expected to behave a certain way. And if you step out of those, you end up going to the guidance counselor, which happens more than once in this movie, or um, you you sort of understand how you're going to be labeled and seen if you end up hooking up with a guy. Uh, again, there's an, another great conversation about uh, Ginger having slept with this guy saying, well, to him, I'm just a lay. You know, he doesn't care who I am. I'm just a lay. But to everyone else, I'm going to be the whore that slept with him. And so there's a lot of that investigation of, of teenage femininity and teenage sexuality to some degree. Like, a, a, you know, after she has been attacked by the, the werewolf spoilers, there are werewolves in this werewolf movie, um, you know, and starts to transform slowly, which is a thing I really like. I, I like in this movie how this werewolf transformation takes weeks as she becomes uh, to quote another werewolf film, Wolfier, uh, as she approaches her next menstrual cycle slash the full moon, which turn out to be the same thing. Again, you don't have to dig deep for this metaphor, but it's there. Um, it's a, it, So all of that is really interesting. It, it's really uh, well investigated. Um, there's also some really fun stuff about, as I mentioned before, sort of this idea of sibling rivalry where Ginger, because she's had her uh, period first and is sort of, you know, sexually activated by that in a lot of ways, that it creates this rift between her and Bridget. Um, there's a lot of business with the mother, played by Mimi Rogers, trying to insert herself into the lives of her children, but also not necessarily being successful at that almost being sort of that friend style parent that sometimes is uh is not ideal in a situation and world that you know Mimi Rogers as the mother doesn't really understand doesn't really relate to at this point you know she's a mother she's not a child anymore and it's a transformation uh that that takes place uh when, when you have a child you know that you you stop being uh, an adolescent and, and become someone who takes care of adolescents. And so there's some interesting stuff there. And, and as the movie goes along, uh, you see some kind of surprising depth to that character, I think. And, uh, I, you know, there's this burgeoning relationship between Sam and Bridget. That is a, a really nice juxtaposition to the more aggressive sexual relationships that Ginger pursues where Bridget is more of the, you know, like, I'm, I'm going to slowly fall in love with this guy, although that's not a giant focus, but it, it's definitely a piece of it to uh, help contrast these characters. Um, I would say, in, in terms of a negative for the film, I think there are some pacing issues. I think there are some moments that that feel like they could have been sped up a little bit or, or edited a little bit tighter. Um, but that's kind of a minor complaint, and it, it's interesting to look back at this movie, you know, I mean, this is going going back 21 years now, uh, to the year 2000, and I think it's a really solid entry into both the werewolf 
uh, genre of films or subgenre of horror films, and also a really great look at um, you know the this sort of adolescent teen female sexuality and some of the social pressures of that and that kind of thing. And it does a nice job of never being didactic, uh, which is a trap that a lot of movies fall into. Like when you have a metaphor, it is, uh, it is sometimes a labored metaphor and very rarely in ginger snaps. Does it feel like the movie is trying to teach you a lesson? Um, it, it just is about what it is about. Uh, and, and I appreciate that, but it's a, uh, it's a terrific little movie, uh, runs a little under two hours. So it, it's a fairly easy watch. And, uh, I gotta say there's some pretty good, like uh, the, the special effects aren't always top notch. Again, this is a lower budget effort at the end of the day, but there are a couple of shots of the werewolf that are very, very good. Uh, and, and very, uh, like surprisingly well executed. Not that the, 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 I, I have any doubts that the effects team didn't try or anything like that, but just for a movie of this type using almost entirely practical effects based on everything I could tell was able to pull off some interesting gags. Uh, in particular, there's one where a fully transformed werewolf, uh, kind of leaps onto this table. And I was like, wow, that's really good. I'm, I'm sure this was all done by puppet work or they've got a guy in a suit or something like that, but looks real good. Um, and, and the werewolf is an unusual looking werewolf. There's a, a fantastic scene where Bridget discovers that Ginger is growing a tail. Um, that's really, you know, kind of darkly funny, but, uh, it is really interesting in terms of just werewolf movies in general that you don't often see this sort of gradual transformation like you do in this film. And I really, really like it. I, I, I like all that stuff quite a bit. So, um, there you have it. That is day two of our 31 days of Halloween. It is, uh, uh, great to be doing this. I'm always excited to, uh, talk with all of you about, uh, about these horror movies this time of year. I'm very excited. Uh, I've been doing nothing but the Halloween decorations and, and horror movie watching. And I, I'm just so excited. I can't stand it. So, uh, if you would like to contribute a movie, uh, I can't guarantee like the list is mostly made at this point, but, uh, if you have a suggestion, I am certainly open to the idea of, of swapping a movie or two out. If there is something that you would like uh, to suggest my way, you can do that by hitting me up on social media. Uh, that's at Legion podcasts on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. Um, also, you can drop me a line via email at Bo, that is B-O, at legionpodcasts.com. Uh, if you would like to suggest something, or if you just have a comment about any of the movies uh, that we're talking about, and uh, and, and we'll uh, circle back and uh, address any questions or comments you have at a, at a later date. So, um, by all means... Uh, if you are listening to this, you are already a, a subscriber of Legion Podcasts, and I would encourage you uh, to tell your friends, family, and loved ones, maybe even a couple of enemies, uh, to check us out as well, especially this time of year. Uh, I don't know that there is a, a, a group of podcasters as excited about Halloween as the folks at Legion Podcasts this year, so be sure you are taking care of yourselves. Uh, take care of those around you. Uh, you know, 